All right, everybody, as you can see, this has really nothing to do with habitat. We're in the wrong place for that, but we are in my kitchen and we are gonna bring you a sausage recipe today. We've had a lot of great feedback on our recipes that Jared and I have been posting, so some people have asked for a video. So here you go. We're gonna get into some Texas hot links. Uh, it's like a kibasi, but just a little bit different. I lived in Texas for a couple of years while I was stationed in the Air Force and certain things I can't get back here in Pennsylvania like brisket, uh, gumbo, and Texas hot links I had to learn to make myself. So it's not super difficult. Uh, a couple of go-tos, great sausage recipes and meat curing. I've had this book forever. As you can see, it's got fingerprints and spices and everything all over it. But this is a, a complete volume that goes into everything sausage making. Uh, recipes, spices, time to smoke, temperatures to smoke. If you can only get one book, get this one for sure. But I'd also recommend Charcuterie by Michael Roman. Uh, some fantastic recipes and some different approaches in this one also. So I like to have both on hand. I've used them both for years, great results. Um, the only thing we're gonna need today, uh, I've already ground up five pounds of venison. I do these in five or 10 pound batches. Five pounds work is easy to work with. Uh, natural casings, natural hog casings from LEM. Um, the sausage maker also has some good supplies, but you can get this stuff locally too if, if you don't want to order online. It's just it's more convenient. Five pound sausage stuffer, and we'll get started here. All right, before you get started, your natural hog casings are going to come salted, so you're going to have to make sure those are rinsed real well. I like to rinse them a bunch of times. Companies like LEM do a really good job of cleaning these and packaging them well so you don't get a lot of the smell and some of the uh, unpleasant stuff you might get from trying to get these yourself from a butcher shop. But you can do that too. I like to rinse them a bunch of times and then I just let them soak until I'm ready. Okay, so here we go. We got all of our ingredients here. One thing I forgot to mention, I do like to put 20% ground pork in with my venison just to give it that extra fat which sausage needs. You don't have to, but just make sure you adjust your recipe accordingly if you're not gonna have the extra fat in there. So we got a cup of ice water, a cup of dry milk, Two and a half tablespoons of kosher salt and if I forget some of these measurements I'll have them all listed for you guys. We've got some uh, sugar, pink salt, oh that one doesn't want to come out of there. Black pepper, Fresh garlic, chopped fine. Oh, it smells good. If you're a garlic fan. Marjoram. Don't know if I even ever pronounced that correctly, but that's the way I've always said it. And here's where we start, right there, that's basically a kibasi recipe. Here's where we start going into the Texas hot link a little bit. I got a mixture of cayenne pepper, chili powder, and sweet paprika. And again, I'll have all the measurements listed for you guys. And the dry mustard. Now if my daughters were here, I'd have them dive in because they like doing this part, making a mess. But I'm on my own today. Just incorporate this as good as you can. The better you mix it, 
the more even the flavors will be. What you can do, if you're not sure if you're doing a new recipe and you're not sure if the heat's strong enough or the seasonings are strong enough or too strong, you can just make like a little patty out of the uh, mixture and give it a quick cook in the pan. And that way you could taste how the finished product's going to be just from sampling it before you even go through all the trouble of stuffing and smoking it. So that's a good tip that I learned early on. Alright, we're ready to stuff our five pound stuffer. Uh, another tip, put this in the freezer for a while while you're getting everything ready. Uh, keep everything as cold as possible. That's important whether you're making kibasi, uh, bratwurst, sausage, uh, breakfast sausage links. You want to keep the meat as cold as possible also. So it doesn't hurt to throw that in the freezer for a few minutes. But just keep everything cold, cold, cold. That'll keep your sausage from breaking down and keep all the fat together. All right, when you're prepping your casings, make sure you take out enough so you don't have to stop what you're doing and go back and rinse some more. This stuff can just be packed in salt and saved in the fridge, so don't worry about taking too much out. Better too much than not enough. Go ahead and wet your sausage stuffing tube. I like to wet the countertop too. It helps the casing slide a little bit. You can buy a fancy sausage pricker tool, but I just use little corn holders. It's got the two barbs on it. Works perfect. Just take your casing, find the end, and slide it on there. All right, now that we got the piece of casing all the way on there, you're just gonna do a simple overhand knot on the end. Pull that tight and go ahead and continue to pull that all the way to the end. And then just put a couple holes in there. You could even put a couple further down here. Just helps any air bubbles start not to get out of there when we start cranking. So we're ready to rock. You want a full casing, you want to tighten it up, but you don't want it so tight that it's gonna blow up the casing. So that takes a little bit of practice, but you'll get used to it. And every once in a while, just stop and poke some more holes in there and let all the air out. It helps to coil this up too as you're going. So you're not fighting the weight of the sausage. And just leave yourself enough at the end to tie in the knot. Get to add your air holes. A couple holes in the end before you tie the knot. Keep the air from bubbling up in there. Give her a flip. Hook the other side. And you're ready for the smoker. 
Now, of course, everybody's smoker's different. I like to hang mine on wooden rods, so you have to know the length of your opening so you're not touching the sides or touching the bottom of your smoker. So mine's about the length of this stuffer, actually. So I just hang it down about that far. And then just loop it around. You gotta leave some space in between there so the smoke and the air can get, the hot air can get around it. And that's pretty much it. Ready for the smoker. All right, this is my smoker set up for sausage. I like to use an electric smoker because it's easier to control the temperature. This is an old Bradley. This was pre-digital, so what I had to do was go back and retrofit a temperature controller on here, but it's worked great. I've had this thing for 15, 20 years, and it's made a lot of sausage, but you could really fine tune it with the newer ones that are digital. Just want to show you real quick how I got this hanging in here. What you want to do is make sure it's not touching the sides or the bottom or each other. So you might have to move some stuff around a little bit. And then uh, for this type of sausage, we're going to go 130 with the dampers wide open. And that'll dry the sausage. And uh, after about an hour, we'll start adding smoke. All right. Now that these are all dried out, we're going to bump the temperature up to 165. And we're going to start adding our smoke. I'm going to use uh, apple wood. That's what I prefer. It's a mild smoke flavor, but a good flavor. It won't overpower anything. And the way that this is set up, Bradley uses these pucks. These are just compressed apple wood. And they're about 20 minutes each. That's what this timer will go on. And um, That'll give me about an hour of smoke, and that's about all we'll need. So we'll check back on this, and I'll keep you posted. Okay, our internal meat thermometer said 152. That's our goal. We're there. That's what we're looking for. Now we just got to take these inside and give them a cold water bath to bring the temperature down. All right, so after a few hours of investment, we got a big, beautiful power. Kibasi or hot links, whatever you want to call it. And I know I'm going to get some hate mail from the boys in Texas to say that that's not Kibasi, it's hot link. But there's many different ways to do it. Uh, this is my version of it. And uh, let's give it a little taste. Good stuff. Hope you enjoyed it.